では続きましては総括対談となります。So the next is a concluding discussion from、uh, Development Bank of、uh, Japan and、uh, Ms. Fumio Harada. And、uh, from PRI, we have、uh, Mr. Nathan Fabian,、uh, the Chief Sustainable、uh, System Officer.、Uh, please give them nice rounds of applause. Please begin. Good evening. This will be the concluding discussion, and there will be the closing declaration by Governor Koike. And I heard that there will be a reception. It's in, late in the evening of Friday, so we're going to try hard to keep with the time constraints. Thank you for the kind introduction. I am Harada, Managing Executive Officer of DBJ, Development Bank of Japan. But I'm not here as the, in the capacity of DBJ. I'm an executive member of Fin City Tokyo. And from wearing that hat, I would like to talk about transition finance or financial center Tokyo.、Uh, I will be asking questions to Nathan for his advice to Tokyo or for Japan. So、uh, I'm here, sitting here in that capacity. Nathan, would you like to introduce yourself first? Hello. So, my name is Nathan Fabian, and I'm from the PRI, and we've just had a,、uh, an excellent week、uh, in Tokyo. We are very gracious to the、uh, Japanese Financial Center, and、uh, sorry, the Tokyo Financial Center and the Japanese government who have. Uh, forgive me, I'm just having trouble with my own feedback from the. <laughs> so I'll fix that in a moment.、Uh, we've had a wonderful week, and everyone has been very gracious, and we see enormous opportunity、uh, in the Japanese market.、Um, at PRI,、uh, I look after all of our financial system reform activities, so our financial regulation, our reporting, these types of things. Thank you very much. This will be the concluding discussion. So, we've heard a lot.、Uh, there were many discoveries and learnings on transition finance and impact finance. First of all,、uh, let's talk about transition finance. As you know, 2022, fiscal year 2022, transition bond, 400 billion issuance, and fiscal 23, the appetite hasn't weaned. And from our perspective, we are a bank, transition lending loans. Also, we see growth in transition loans. And PRI in person was a big day. And on day one, GX bond, climate transition bond, in a manner that complies with international standards, Prime Minister Kishida. Announced that there will be issuance taking place. So there is heightened momentum on transition finance. So let's ask you, Nathan, how do you perceive the Japanese transition bond market, transition finance market from the global perspective? So we are delighted to see the clear intention from the Japanese government on transition finance and all of the excellent technical work that is being done on transition finance. Some of the work、uh, by METI for the、uh, sectoral roadmaps is very good and encouraging. And we are encouraged that、uh, there has been some thought on what the right type of financing instrument is、uh, in, in the form of the GX bond.、Uh, so these are the strengths. There are certainly some things that the international investors are going to look for. Uh, in this bond and in the way that the transition finance framework develops. I'm very happy to discuss those points further. Thank you very much. In the previous、uh, session, as uh, um, Mr. Fabian pointed out, a technology a roadmap、um, was、uh, discussed as a big、uh, trigger. 
and uh, um, handbook was uh, issued at the end of 2020, and the scientific uh, grounds, the ICMA handbook, uh, one of the purposes was to uh, cover uh, such uh, roadmaps. I think some of you uh, may remember when it was uh, issued, uh, it was rather uh, heavily uh, criticized uh, globally uh, whether it is really uh, supported by uh, scientific uh, evidence. But after that, this uh, concept of uh, transition um, has become more established uh, globally and understood uh, in a better way uh, globally. At the same time, the science-based um, meaning backed by uh, the numbers and evidence, uh, the bond issuers and the financial institutions, and uh, there's always accountability. Yes, so the international investors are becoming much more aware uh, of the need for different types of transition and different types of transition finance. And I would recommend to you the GFANS transition framework uh, as it sets out uh, which is currently being consulted on at the moment by GFANS, it sets out different types of transition finance. And this is a very useful framework. It includes, for example, activities that are already green or sustainable, those that need to become green or sustainable over time, and of course, activities which must be exited, for example. Uh, what I think uh, the international community is expecting on this is if we're going to identify climate and transition, in the way we described financial instruments, they're going to expect some certain things like interim targets, 2030, 2035, 2040 targets for emissions reductions and reporting and disclosures that reflect those targets with pathways and anticipated technologies. This is the area which we hope to see more detail on in relation to the planned investment opportunities. In the previous session, the idea behind Japanese transition finance was discussed. Let's spread this to Asia and other countries. That was pointed out. To other countries around the world, evidence, science-based numerics, we have to communicate from Japan that these are science-based and numerics-based. I think that's important. When we look around Asia, Asia Energy Transition Initiative and ASEAN study group by financial sector, financial institutions have been started up. Japan is contributing in those frameworks. And ASEAN in itself has come up with its own taxonomy. So there are several different pathways towards transition that is very true to date. Japan has been closely paying attention to Asian energy projects. Both the public and private sector has been backing Asian infrastructure or uh, transition projects, uh, energy projects, because Asia is part of our supply chain and it occupies much of scope three of Japan. So we it will continue to collaborate with Asian countries and that will in turn uh, mean strengthening the Japan market and Tokyo market, hopefully. And we're running out of time. So let's go to impact finance. Impact finance. There are many initiatives in Japan. It's been tried out by various financial institutions. It's been some time since they began trials. And we are much encouraged. And Shibusawa-san said that Japan is not really behind in terms of impact finance. That was quite encouraging. But when we look at the numbers, the size of the impact market in Japan, the amount, 2021, 5 trillion yen. So globally, it's still very small, uh, which means that there's great room for further growth. Japan's impact market, uh, what do we need to have in order to explosively grow in Japan? Any advice? Yes, this is a similar phenomenon all around the world. I think that the impact investing uh, activities are teaching us new techniques for measurement and attribution uh, for additionality. And these techniques on uh, data gathering and reporting are being 
in, uh, learned or used by other parts of the investment markets. And this is actually quite important. The uh, impact seeking uh, and uh, ability to verify impact, that market is very hard to grow just from that premise. It's more amenable to some asset classes and sectors. So private equity, venture, um, some real estate, some uh, infrastructure. Now, all these asset classes need to grow rapidly. There's no doubt about that. And we can attract capital from institutional investors into these sectors and impact methodologies have a role to play. But we also need to take the measurement techniques and the goal alignment methodologies, so sustainability goal alignment, into the big pools of global capital inequities and fixed income, and that goes to sovereign bonds, as well as thematic and green bonds. And so this is another way we can grow and benefit from the impact sector. This is something you have some experience in yourself. Thank you. As you said, the asset class uh, maturity um, as the uh, um, instruments uh, to uh, invest and the ease of uh, uh, investing um, are also important, like uh, infrastructure investment. So equity or a fixed income, there is no a scheme which enables the direct investment of such funds in infrastructure. But uh, in Australia, Canada, and Europe, uh, pension funds are playing a very uh, crucial roles. But uh, we are far from that in Japan still. So that is a huge uh, challenge. And uh, at the Development of uh, Development Bank of Japan, uh, we don't name it the Impact Fund, but the Society 5.0 um, is what we offer. It's uh, different from uh, ordinary um, loans. Uh, we don't uh, ask for a quick uh, exit, uh, but uh, impact is uh, required. So first the fund, uh, people want to invest in the first fund, um, but. Uh, the impact fund that would be rather difficult uh, based upon the same set of criteria as you said lastly i would like to ask you um, in the uh, last uh, session on fin city uh, tokyo uh, a concept uh, based upon sustainability access uh, uh, capitalizing on uh, the japan's uh, uniqueness um, uh, the Tokyo uh, wants to become a global fin uh, city or um, financial center and uh, a PR uh, person. Uh, the um, uh, Tokyo 2023 uh, was uh, held in Tokyo, uh, which was a great success. And uh, uh, there were many uh, achievements as a result, inclusive of all that. Um, uh, uh, could you uh, talk about how uh, Tokyo can become a global financial center? Uh, of course, as a G7 country and a very large economy, uh, international investors already hold many investments in, in Japan and in Japanese com uh, companies especially. So uh, there's great interest in this market. I would say that the reception we have received this week uh, on sustainable finance is one of the most impressive we have seen anywhere in the world. The PRI is a global organization. We have investors in 80 countries. Uh, investors of over $120 trillion. And this, the way that the sustainable finance message has been packaged here has been exceptionally well thought out with very good and clear ambition. So we're off to a very good start. And I would say that the mind of the global investors now is open to how you intend to convert that. So there's a clear opportunity. But you know, I would make it clear, the next level of detail, there'll be enormous attention to the next level of detail. So the opportunity is in your hands. Uh, the investors are going home this week with a very positive feeling. Uh, and so they will be sitting down and looking at the numbers and looking at the assumptions and the technology roadmaps in detail next week and the week after. Uh, and already we've had requests from investors for follow-up meetings with your government departments to understand the next, next plans um, in the months ahead. So it's, it's a very good start. Uh, and investors, I think, have high, high hopes for this market. Thank you very much uh, for uh, encouraging remarks. Um, PRI in person, I think it was quite impressive. 
and uh, it was very uh, well uh, received that uh, uh, Prime Minister Kishida, uh, the uh, seven uh, the, um, the public uh, pension um, um, that should be uh, the subject for PRI, and uh, he was committed. And that was a huge uh, milestone, Japanese uh, pension fund. Of course, many of them are making hard efforts, but uh, mobilization of uh, private money, when it comes to that topic, uh, Japan is uh, lagging behind, but that is a huge step forward. Uh, what do you think? Uh, so the new funds that have been committed by the Prime Minister are excellent. The implication is that the fiduciaries of those funds will now need to find investments themselves that have environmental and social characteristics. That's the implication of being a PRI signatory. You have to examine the risks. You have to understand how your portfolio is going to transition. So that's why we think it's good news. Uh, and this should lead to some new asset owners coming into this market here with expectations of investment managers. And this should flow through the investment chain. Uh, of course, uh, our aim is to encourage all of our financial actors, our banks, our investment managers, our insurers, our credit ratings assessors and everyone to understand what this transition must look like so that we can start to allocate the, well, as we say, allocate the trillions. We must allocate the trillions, and they mean dollars when they say trillions, to this transition. Thank you. Pension funds. Final beneficiaries are the citizens of Japan and pensioners and contributors to the pension funds. So elevating financial literacy is very important for financial institutions, for the market, and for the regulators, and for the citizens. Yes, that's right. Uh, one thing we know is that when invest individual investors and beneficiaries are asked, would you like your investments to align with environmental and social goals, they almost always say yes. They don't always understand exactly how to do it. That's our job as, as investors and professional uh, representatives for their, for their finances. But it's pretty clear, we think, that the individual beneficiaries have an expectation of alignment with climate and environmental goals. So we do expect more pressure from this side as our communities understand the implications of the targets more. And so we will have this client demand in addition to these legal obligations, which I think are tightening. We heard earlier today the idea of investing for sustainable impact. We are seeing governments around the world, and I believe Japan will do the same thing, is consider how these obligations come into primary fiduciary, sorry, fiduciary duties at law. So you must demonstrate how you've considered the impact of your investments on environmental social goals. So this brings the idea of science-based targets and pathways and understanding avoided emissions and exposure to investments that align with the goals, this will become the primary, well, part of the primary duties of financial fiduciaries. This is what we expect. Thank you very much. Today's uh, sessions um, introduced uh, various uh, new uh, views, and also uh, we were able to feel the diversity of uh, a Tokyo uh, market. Today's session and the various uh, events, as uh, Nathan san pointed out, uh, uh, the many um, uh, stakeholders in sustainability, um, uh, we would be uh, very uh, pleased as uh, Fin City Tokyo that uh, if uh, uh, we assimilated uh, their uh, thoughts. So thank you very much for staying with us uh, this afternoon. This is the end of the session. Thank you very much. Uh, please give them nice rounds of applause. Thank you so much, Ms. Fumio Harada and Mr. Nathan Fabian. Thank you so much.